The walled city of Famagusta in Cyprus was once described as the richest city in the world. It boasted 365 churches, one for every day of the year, while the Gothic Cathedral of St. Nicholas became a place of coronation for the kings of Jerusalem. Its Lucinian, Genoese, Venetian, British and Ottoman conquerors each added new layers to produce a unique and remarkable city contained within three and a half kilometers of imposing walls. But the centuries have not been kind to Famagusta. By the end of the 19th century, the city was barely inhabited, its streets choked with rubble from the crumbling buildings. The churches were abandoned, their roofs caved in, the city in a pitiable state. In the 1930s, a program of works was instigated by Theophilus Magabgap, a Lebanese Cypriot who was born in Famagusta. As director of antiquities, he conscripted inmates from the local prison to clear sites of rubble. And over a period of 30 years, he stabilized and conserved most of the city's monuments. But in the mid-1950s, that work was brought to a halt. A political struggle for independence and years of inter-ethnic conflict led in 1974 to the division of Cyprus and the political isolation of the north of the island. Had it not been for that isolation, Famagusta would long ago have been listed as a World Heritage Site, benefiting from international funding and expertise, and taking its rightful place alongside other great walled cities like Carcassonne and Dubrovnik. The only upside to this situation is that development has been largely kept in check, leaving the walled city remarkably intact. But many of its monuments, damaged in preceding centuries by armed siege, earthquake and long neglect, are now open to the elements. The historic city is built predominantly from a sandy porous limestone that is vulnerable to water. Much of the masonry is slowly crumbling to a fine dust, threatening the integrity of the buildings. Other structural problems are plain to see and in need of urgent attention, while beautiful stonework like this tracery lies shattered on the ground. Even those buildings that retain their roofs are poorly secured and populated by pigeons that cause further damage. The plaster inside churches is lifting and crumbling, taking with it the frescoes that date as far back as the 14th century. Alongside graffiti from previous centuries, there are more recent additions, and some, though thankfully few, examples of wanton vandalism. Seeing all this, it would be easy to conclude that nobody cared, but that's not the case. Oktai Kayalp was born in Famagusta and has been its mayor since 1994. He's pledged to conserve and revitalize the city he loves. As leader of the forward-thinking Famagusta Turkish municipality, he's instigated a series of projects to turn the situation around. Back in 1997, the main square and shopping street were closed to traffic and repaved, diverting cars and trucks away from the cathedral and Venetian palace. Parking areas have been created out of vacant, dusty plots, and a scheme to revitalize the city's historic narrow streets was completed in 2008. The old covered market has also been restored, along with 19th century warehouses. And at present, a new park is under construction along the sea wall. The work has been carried out according to a thoroughly researched revitalization plan. And many of the projects have involved partnerships with international bodies like the United Nations Development Programme and the European Union. The municipality has no formal responsibility for conserving and protecting the city's historic monuments. But this hasn't stopped it from taking a proactive stance in efforts to enlist international support for conservation. 
That cause has been championed by art historian Dr. Michael Walsh, who has worked tirelessly to see a return of international scholars and experts to the task of conserving the historic city. In 2007, with the backing of the municipality, he successfully applied to have Famagusta included on the World Monuments Fund watch list of endangered heritage sites. The listing brought with it international recognition of the importance of Famagusta and the urgent need to protect it. In the same year, filmmaker Dan Frodsham and art historian Alan Langdale produced a feature-length documentary on the history of Famagusta's architecture. The Stones of Famagusta, which was sponsored by the municipality, played before audiences across Cyprus, Europe and the United States, winning an international film award and many converts to the cause of Famagusta. In the meantime, the municipality was engaged in efforts supported by the Embassy of Sweden and the United Nations to build a political consensus across Cyprus on the need to conserve Famagusta's monuments. The catalyst for this was an international symposium organized by Dr. Walsh, which in the spring of 2008 brought together in Paris leading academics with an interest in the city. A parallel meeting of leaders of the Turkish and Greek communities of Famagusta resulted in a public commitment to set aside politics in the interests of conserving the city. The mayor of Famagusta, Oktay Kayalp, emphasized that Famagusta was part of a shared European culture. The meeting was supported by ICOMOS and hosted by Europa Nostra, which also pledged its support. Back in Famagusta, international experts began to arrive to begin the task of assessing the city's conservation needs. Hosted by Famagusta Turkish Municipality, a team from the World Monuments Fund carried out an initial inspection. Their report provides a valuable first insight into the huge task ahead. It calls for urgent action to stabilize some of the structures and frescoes while recommending a coordinated, long-term program of conservation. Again invited by Dr. Walsh and hosted by the municipality, a team of civil engineers from Minho University in Portugal undertook a detailed inspection of three of the city's churches. They brought with them sophisticated equipment to assess the risk from earthquakes and reveal cracks and voids in the stonework. The results of their tests are still being analyzed, but a preliminary report calls for immediate action to deal with some of the problems they identified. From the UK, a team was brought in as part of a USA project which singled out the Church of Saints Peter and Paul for detailed inspection. A range of techniques, including impulse radar and infrared imaging, was used to build a complete picture of the structure and reveal areas of weakness. Though relatively intact, their report recommended a range of measures, including strengthening of the roof and sealing against rainwater. Europa Nostra also contributed a report which identified the need to conserve the city's walls. It highlighted some structural concerns and the threat posed by grass growing on the walls and bastions. Taken together, these surveys have begun to build a fuller picture of the city's long-term conservation needs, as well as identifying areas of immediate concern. What's emerged is that even the best preserved and cared for monuments, like St. Nicholas Cathedral, are in need of major conservation measures. Around the apse, these brackets, which once supported a balcony, are badly cracked and in danger of collapse. Like most of the buildings in Famagusta, mortar is missing between stones, weakening the integrity of the structure. There are also areas which are badly eroded by the elements. And there are examples of poorly executed repairs using inappropriate materials like cement. But the cathedral has fared better than most of the monuments. 
St. George of the Latins is the oldest surviving church in Famagusta and dates from the late 13th century. It retains beautiful examples of ornate Gothic carving. Like many of Famagusta's monuments, it received attention from Theophilus Magabgab. The new stones he added to stabilize the facade wall are still distinct. The roof is long gone and unprotected from the elements, the masonry is today in a poor state. Some elements like this hanging stone and this loose masonry are a threat to public safety. St. George of the Greeks was the Orthodox Cathedral of Famagusta. It bears the scars inflicted during the siege of 1571 and in places cannonballs can still be seen embedded in the walls. The church has also suffered earthquake damage. In the late 17th and early 18th century the main dome and roof caved in leaving the building open to the elements. On the facade much of the stone facing has crumbled away exposing the rubble core. In the apse of the church a surprising number of frescoes have survived, thanks perhaps to the work of British art conservator Monica Bardswell, who cleaned and waxed the paintings back in 1937. But the frescoes have received no attention since then and are rapidly deteriorating. The frescoes have been under attack from graffiti artists for centuries. Sailors coming ashore used to carve images of their ships in the plaster. These at least have some charm, but more recent additions less so. The northeast corner of the city is known as the Syrian Quarter. Until recently it was a closed military area which protected it from the encroachment of new development. The Church of St. Mary was built in the 14th century by the Carmelite monks. Today just traces remain of its former glory. The teams from both the World Monuments Fund and Minho University have identified this asymmetrically weighted arch as being a major structural problem and in need of urgent attention. This window in the façade illustrates well the changing fate of Famagusta. At the beginning of the 20th century, its tracery was all but gone. Theophilus Magabka painstakingly reconstructed the window in 1941. But by the 1990s, much of it had again crumbled, and in 2008, the final pieces fell to the ground. The remaining frescoes inside the church are in poor condition. This depiction of St. George and the dragon only becomes apparent by superimposing a line drawing of the fresco as it appeared in the 19th century. There's still evidence of the work undertaken by Monica Bardswell to stabilize the plaster work, but long neglect has taken its toll and it's quickly disintegrating. Next to the Carmelite is the small but beautifully proportioned Armenian church. Its roof is intact thanks once again to the work of Theophilus Magabgab in the 1930s and 40s. But the building is unsecured. Inside the church, old carpets and bedding show that people have been squatting here. The roof is no longer sound and shows signs of water ingress. The plaster work is flaking off by the day, taking with it the frescoes once so lovingly conserved by Monica Bardswell. The wax layer she applied to protect the paintings is still slightly sticky to the touch. And the frescoes in the lower half of the building have been obliterated by whitewash, the heads of some saints just peeping above it. The photographs taken by Monica Bardswell in 1937 are now the only clue as to what lies beneath. The same fate has befallen St. Anne's Church nearby. Unlike the Armenian Church, 
the roof here is watertight, but a layer of cement and whitewash has again obliterated the lower portion of frescoes. This was one of the churches visited by inspectors from the World Monuments Fund, and what they discovered here powerfully illustrates the importance of such expertise. It appears that when the walls were covered over, someone was thoughtful enough to insert a layer of masonite board. In areas where the covering layer has fallen away, the frescoes behind have emerged intact. It offers the hope that behind the whitewash, these frescoes, which were photographed in the 1930s, have also survived and may yet be revealed. There is hope for the future. Famagusta Turkish municipality has recently backed a major project to protect the city's endangered frescoes, and it will continue to support such projects as best it can. But the task ahead is huge, the stakes high, and the future still uncertain. The vision of Famagusta Turkish municipality is of a vibrant, accessible, well-preserved city that celebrates the diversity of its heritage. But it will require international commitment, expertise and funding to see that vision fulfilled. The first steps have been taken, but if Famagusta is to be saved, the international commitment so far made will need to be translated into tangible action. The clock is ticking and time is running out. Famagusta Turkish Municipality has made the heritage a priority in Famagusta Walled City. Our objective is to promote and conserve this historical heritage which belongs to all mankind. This has been difficult because of lack of funding and expertise. We need the international community's help to conserve Famagusta for future generations.